Yo, Elliot, being in Long Island, as events unfold, it is clear that I need to move to a free state like Florida or Texas. As a 19-year-old who has just left college um, for not taking the jab, I have been working hard at two jobs here in New York with no clear direction as to a career forward and no major savings. Although I'm very thankful for where I am right now and grateful God has woken me not to follow the masses, I've had thoughts of getting into the business of flipping houses, creating a survival guide hiking business, but I have no clear direction, especially now since I'll have to start in a new location. What advice can you provide for me moving into a new state with no major source of income or way forward currently? Also, I am, am I wrong to abandon my fellow freedom-loving people in New York? Their fight will be even harder if people like me flee to other states. Your guidance is highly appreciated. Thank you for reading. So my first question with regard to you wanting to leave the state is what do you have holding you there? So, for example, you know, if tyranny comes to Florida, as it might, like it came to New York, right? Like all of these mandates always start on the coast, if you notice. They start on the big cities on the coast. So, you know, what we see happening in New York City, what we see happening in Los Angeles and San Francisco, those are just pilot tests. They're just testing out what they really want to do through, throughout the entire United States. There may be some states that hold out, but who knows how long they'll hold out, right? Because although the states are sovereign, we are a United States. And so things like interstate checkpoints may be coming and, you know, they keep us prisoner in our states. So you say, you know, moving to a free state like Florida or Texas, that's a good idea. But ultimately, if you have something that, is keeping you there uh like me you know, i'm just thinking about myself like if that tyranny comes here i'm gonna buckle i'm gonna hug, hunker down i'm just gonna look it's just the way it's gonna be i'm gonna stay right here. i'm not going anywhere because you can't run at a certain point we can't run any longer we got to stop running right where are you gonna run to america is the last bastion of freedom and it is all eroding quickly right people came to america to to escape what we're now facing right Think about all the Russians and the Venezuelans and the Eastern Europeans and the Argentinians and the Chileans. These people, think about Cubans. Oh, man. Think about these people who lived under government rule that is very analogous to what we're experiencing right now. They came here because this is the safe haven. And these people may have brought their families or they may have left their families, but things got so bad that they came to the last free state. America is it. When America falls, we all fall. And that's why there's such an effort to destroy America. And it's working. It's going to happen. America is done. America is destroyed. I heard that there's a, first of all, it's been a long time coming, but the, it's just been hyper accelerated since 2020. And this most recent debacle in Afghanistan may be the last nail in the coffin of what? The degradation of the dollar, destroying the dollar. If America loses its, its position as having the world standard currency, right? We hold the petrodollar, right? It's the world standard currency. If we lose our, our position as the world standard currency, then inflation like we've never seen before because countries are going to be dumping the dollar. And so the entire United States is going to be one big bloodbath as a result. We're going to experience exactly what they experienced in Argentina and in you know these other failed states, Greece, you know, when they had they needed a, 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 a bailout from the European Union. All these things. No one's going to bail out America, though. I'll tell you that. No one's going to bail out America. So who knows what's up? We could run, but ultimately we can't hide, right? Where are you going to hide? And it may be one of these things where you could run, but your back's going to be against the wall. And eventually you, me, and everybody else, we're going to have to fight like our lives depend on it, right? So I, you know, I want you to, I want to instill that value in you now because even if you run as a result of New York being what it is, it could come here. I am no fool. First of all, Americans are fools to think that kinetic war can't come to our land. And we're fools to think that the petrodollar is going to be the world reserve currency forever. 
And we're fools to think that the food trucks are going to keep bringing food to the supermarkets. We're fools to think that our easy, comfy, cozy lives are going to remain the way they are indefinitely because of confirmation bias, right? Is that the word? We have this bias that things are going to normalcy bias. That's what it is. Normalcy bias. Yo, if anybody's living with any kind of normalcy bias or they're seeking normalcy somewhere that they could rest in, I think we are deluding ourselves. I don't think it's going to last. So I don't delude myself into thinking that, you know, shit could, shit could hit the fan here in Florida too. And Texas. We could lose. Either that or we might have to fight like, like raccoons backed up against the wall. Right? Fighting. So it ain't going to be easy for no one nowhere, in my opinion. And, and so there really is no running. But if you have nothing to lose, right? <coughs> right? Like, so for example, if I leave, I have a lot to lose, right? Because it's going to cost me a hell of a lot. Do, do I have to make, do I make that sacrifice or not? I'll cross that bridge when I get to it. But you're a 19-year-old man, a soul, a soul soldier, young man who only needs uh, shoes on his feet and a few bucks to buy something to eat. Right. You really don't need anything. Right. You could live. You could you could do whatever you want. You could live in your car. Right. And I've, I've suggested that to young men over the years. I said, look, man, just shake up your boring ass life because you're being stale and stagnant. and You're not going nowhere. Quit your job. Quit your situation. Get in your car and go live. My cousin did that. My cousin and her husband uh, bought a school bus. They hooked it up and they just living out their bus. They're driving around. And they can decide to pick up wherever they want to go, whatever they don't want to be. They're living in that bus. How long will that last? Who knows? But you know what? They're apocalypse ready because that's may maybe what we all end up doing. We might all end up refugees, right? And so who the hell knows? The main thing to do is to prepare yourself mentally and spiritually and physically, right? Be strong, strong, and have trust in the Lord. And those are the three things that no one can ever take away from you. Now, you're asking me if you should flip houses or create a survival guide business and you have no direction. My advice is that you don't want to you don't want to take on too many burdens at once. Moving is a burden and building a business is a burden. My opinion is start one and then do the other. But I'm not sure which one will be first. Right. So how would it look like if you wanted to get out as quickly as you can? Leave New York, go to a state that is more of your liking and get a fucking job. Just get a job. Here's the thing right now. Nobody's working. Everywhere I go, there's short staffed. I go to these restaurants. When I used to live in St. Pete, I'll go to this restaurant, beautiful restaurant, great restaurant, expensive food. It was the nicest restaurant. These servers, they work hard, but they made good money because they attracted high profile clientele. They can't get people to work. I guarantee that the guys that are working there, if you work your face off as a server, they're making, I, I, I don't know what servers make, but I'm sure a couple thousand dollars a week. I'm sure they're making a couple thousand dollars a week. They're doing all right. I know several of the guys personally, right, because they've been serving us for so long, they raise their families. I know several of the guys raise their families on their salary as a server. But here's the thing. There's so many opportunities right now. There's so many job opportunities. You can, you have no problem finding a job wherever you go. I live over here. I live in rural Florida. I drive up and down my long rural road and I see, I see help wanted signs at all of the Arbor, like places where they, where they make trees or they have landscaping, like all these like, uh, like agricultural jobs, bro. There's no shortage of agri agricultural jobs. There are shortages of people that want to work. So as a 19 year old man, if you really want to go get out, get into the mindset that I'm going to go and work, go somewhere and work. I would do that. If I was a, like, you know what I used to think about when I was a young man and I was trying to struggle to find my place and I was deciding what I would do in order to get shit done. I knew I lived in Florida and in Florida, we have a lot of agriculture. I said to myself, because I know they have these temp working places. I will go be a temp worker and, and, and pick oranges and grapefruits and peaches for a day and earn, earn a wage. Mexicans do that shit all the time. We have so, that's the thing. That's the thing, man. People are crazy. Americans don't want jobs, but they complain when the Mexicans come here and take their jobs. All the Mexicans are working and they're having babies. They're working, picking oranges and shit, living in with their grandma in these little houses and they got babies. They got kids. They're doing fine because they're working. They're not attached to the effeminate pleasures that we have as soft paw faggots in this country. They're hardworking people. And they don't expect anybody to give them anything. They'll come here and they fucking work their ass off. 
Be willing to work. That would be that would be my opinion. Go to where you want to go and go with the mindset that I'm going to work. My father came to this country from Belize. Backwards ass country. He didn't even wear shoes. I went there a couple years ago to see where my father lived and I almost threw up because it stunk. Terrible place to live. My father came here. Never seen a building, never seen an airplane, never seen a subway. He don't know what the fuck is going on. He's in a he's a he's in an alien land. But he had one thing going for him. I could work. I can work. And you know what my father did? It was back in the 1970s. He didn't know how to fix cars. But he went into car dealer after car dealer after car dealer or, or, or mechanic shop after mechanic shop. And he said, I will work for you for free. I will work for you for free for two weeks if you just show me what you need me to do. You just show me the ropes, how to do what I need to do. And I'll work for free. He was rejected, rejected, rejected until one man took him under his wing and said, okay. I'll give you this little brown boy a shot. And you know what? My dad dominated that shop. He did so well in that shop as a as a as a alien from another fucking country in that shop that he made the man that took him under his wing his best man in his wedding. My dad married his my mother. This it's the funniest thing because we have these uh wedding albums. And it's just all my family. On my father's side, my mother's side, everybody looks black, right? My dad's family side is dark colored. And my mom's side, even though they're light skinned, they got afros. And it is one white man that my dad's taking pictures with. I see, oh, when I was a kid, I used to wonder, I was like, who's that guy? I never seen that guy before. My dad taking a picture with a white guy back in the 1970s. It's the guy that showed my dad how to, how to do the job that he does because he's so willing to work. So I want to kind of like just put that out there for you, and I'm gonna put that out there for all the young men who are not sure what to do work, work, work. Figure out what you can do with your two bare hands and go do it, right? You'll never be at a loss, especially right now when all these sissy boys, soft paws, effeminate men are staying home collecting their stimulus check. Fuck your stimulus check. I don't want your stimulus check, your $600 a week. I would rather work for less money than take your free government stipend. Right? I don't want nothing from the government. So that's my opinion for you. Go work. Learn how to work. Now, you could go all the other way around too. It depends on you and how diligent you are, how industrious you are, how willing you are to do what you got to do even if nobody's breathing down your throat. If you want to create this survival hiking business, which I think is better than flipping homes, I wouldn't touch real estate in that way with a 10-foot pole right now because who knows when this shit is going to collapse. But I'll tell you what, people going to know how to survive. If you have survival skills, you know survival stuff, or you could learn it, my opinion is stay where you are, build that business up, make your money, and then go somewhere you can go. You could create a survival business that allows you to be untethered to a geographical location because a lot of it is just information. You could create, I, see, I follow them, I follow a lot of these uh, YouTube channels survival YouTube channel, survival ebook, survival course, right? Mike Adams, he gives away free survival courses, but in the survival courses, he has advertisement for his products to help you survive, right? There's a myriad of things you could do because you're in the information marketing business. That's a good business to get into if you want to be light on your feet. Flipping homes might not be the same way because you got to flip home somewhere and a home ain't going with you. So my opinion, step one, the best route, go where you want to go and get your hands fucking dirty. Go work. Number two, if you're industrious and you're ready and you could do it, start building that, that freedom business, that non-job, right? That's essentially what it is. Start building that now. Earn an income from it. Don't be like these guys who get stuck making everything for their business, but they don't make any money. Your business is to make money. And I think a lot of people forget that, especially, especially millennials. I think Gen Z is waking up. More, I think Gen Zs are, are a little bit smarter than millennials in this regard because millennials have this egalitarian mindset and, and, and Gen Zers look at them like, y'all are stupid. I seen them. I see the way it is. I have millennial friends and then I have Gen Z friends. You could say associates, right? And I watch the Gen Zers and they're, they're, they're tough. They're willing to work. They're willing to be sacrificers and warriors. So it depends on you. It depends on how you want to be, what kind of man you're going to be. And how you want to unfold that thing there. But I see nothing wrong with getting your, going to where you want to go and get your hands freaking dirty. Go fix fences. Go dig holes. You have nothing to lose, right? You have nothing to lose. You don't have to pay. 
You don't have to raise a family. You don't have a wife. You don't have children. Keep your bills very low. Be a minimalist, right? You don't need PS10, whatever it is up to right now, right? You don't, half the subscriptions people have, you don't need it, right? Save your money, work your face off, and then work your way up wherever you are, start growing your roots, right? Wherever you choose to go. Wherever you choose to go, you're going to be all right. As long as you're willing to work, dude. Done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent King Transformation classes with my students where, among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week and we speak on things as it relates to becoming kings in our lives and fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you and you want to join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word King, K-I-N-G, and then me and my team will get back to the details to see if you qualify. I really hope to see you at the next meeting. Done.